Let's do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach, aka Crochet Me Daddy, and I'm a crochet, plushie designer, maker, pattern designer, I'm mean, a good at me artist all those kind of titles all mixed into one. I'm a crochet person on the internet. If you're new here, welcome along. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back to hang out with me. In today's video, we're gonna be doing tips and tricks about sewing amigurumi pieces together. I know this topic can be very scary and a lot of people really wanna avoid sewing, but I'm hoping that these tips and tricks will help you and make you feel a bit braver or a bit more comfortable with sewing your amigurumi. So how this video is going to work is we're gonna go over five tips and tricks that I like to remind myself about or use when I I am sewing amigurumi pieces together and then we're going to move on to the certain techniques about sewing certain pieces together. Also if you like this kind of content please don't forget to give me a like, a comment or a subscribe. Your engagement means the world to me and it also means that once I'm monetized on this channel I can actually buy myself better equipment rather than the stinky little stand that I bump all the time and it ruins my shots. So <laughs> please engage with my stuff and uh, please help me get to that monetization level. I would really, really appreciate it. And I think the people viewing might appreciate it as well. Anyway, let's get onto the tips and tricks. Tip number one, use a bent darning needle. So when you're sewing your pieces together, you will have a, like a lot of you will start with like a plastic, just straight tip darning needle for sewing your pieces. If you can find a metal bent tip needle, this will be life changing. It just makes it so much easier to move around every single stitch. You're not trying to like shove it through the entire plushie to get out the other side to try shove it back. This little bent tip is a life changer. Please get one. I don't know how much more detail I can go into this, but I'm very passionate about it. So you need to find one now. I'll put a link below to where you can find some online from certain craft stores and whatnot, but that's the important tip, just get a bent tip darning needle, that's it. <laughs> I'm so passionate about that one. It was a life changer, okay? Number two, if you're using plush yarn like your Honey Bunny from Hobie or your Parfait Chunkies or even your blanket yarns, try using an acrylic yarn or a cotton yarn for when you're actually sewing the pieces together as that can avoid the fraying that happens with these yarns. This brings me into tip number three. Be gentle if you are sewing with plush yarns. I talk a bit about this in my tips and tricks video for working with plush yarn, but this yarn is very fragile. So if you're like pulling it tight all the time or you're running it around certain stitches and certain directions and whatnot, it can start fraying and it'll be very difficult to sew with. So either be gentle with the yarn or even just try a different yarn altogether for the sewing and make sure you match the color when you're doing so. Tip number four, use pins to map out where you're going to sew into. Whenever I am putting any piece together, I always pin all the pieces onto there first so I can actually just see what the plushie will look like and once I'm pretty happy with that, when I'm taking each piece off, I will put pins back in into each gap that I will sew into. These usually match the amount of stitches. If this is gonna focus to me. Just pretend you can tell that there's three stitches on there. I can actually map out which three gaps I will be sewing into on the piece because I put pins in there to map it out. That's that. Once you've done that a few times, you'll start using the pins a bit less and less and you'll start using your eyes a bit more because it is, it is, it is relatively easy to count and see the grid and everything, but using the pins as an aid at the start is very, very helpful for beginners. Tip number five, a lucky last, is don't be so hard on yourself. Sewing can be scary. I still fear it sometimes, but once you get into the groove of doing it so often, you'll get very used to it, you'll get better at it, and it shouldn't be a thing to fear. It's just like starting crochet itself. You don't know how it's gonna go, and the more practice you put in, the better it really looks. So do not fear sewing. In addition to that, this is one thing to remember is that we're not actually sewing onto a perfect shape. When you're working with amigurumi, you're working in a spiral usually, and that actually tends to give it a bit of a sloped shape with how the stitches just lay out. So when you're actually sewing these pieces on, you're not going onto a, I guess, a tidy shape. It's not a perfect shape that you're sewing into, and therefore your pieces will never actually be even. This side here is not on the same trajectory as this side here. So just do your best, remember that, that this is something that is a bit of a challenge and 
you will just find like once you do it more and more and more you'll get into that groove and then you can kind of figure out how to make pieces look a little bit tidier or a bit more even and yeah it only comes with practice it, it, it's just the thing about practice so don't fear it don't be so hard on yourself okay that's the tip. <laughs> All right, so those are my five best tips and tricks about sewing pieces together. So let's get into the actual sewing techniques. Here we have my little cow pal here. It has built all the pieces all placed together with pins. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm happy with that is I'm actually gonna take all the pins out because having all these pieces on here as well as all these loose strands of yarn can make it a little bit difficult. And then I'm gonna talk to you about the different types of pieces that we're gonna sew together on this video. So now taking all the pieces off, I'm going to start talking to you about the certain types of pieces that we'll be sewing and the different techniques that you use for each one of them. So first off, we have the open gap pieces. These are the ones where we have actual space on the inside that you could use for stuffing. They normally have an edge like this in which you'll be sewing in each stitch around onto the piece. So we also have our edge pieces. These are the pieces where you'll be sewing along literally just one row. There is no inside to be stuffed or anything. You are just sewing this piece onto the side of a, another piece and there isn't anything to be stuffed, you're not going around and closing it off, it is literally just a row onto the side of a piece. And then we also have our flat pieces, which are the pieces like this, where you are literally just sewing a flat piece, just straight up onto the piece like so, you're not actually sewing the edges onto it, but I'll get into more detail about that later. So what we're going to start off with first is one of these edge pieces, because I can actually show you with how we map out our pins, as well as the placement of these pieces. So with this one here, what I would normally do is I'd count how many stitches there are on the edge and you can see that we have one, two, and three. So therefore I'll be covering three different, I guess you'd call them like pixels or stitches um, on the main base of the doll or the um, Ami Gurumi piece. So in my pattern I say that I would be going five stitches back from the top of the eye. So that would be, if I look at the top of the eye here, Find that first stitch, so I'll be going one, two, three, four, five. And that's where I'll be placing my inner stitch. So what I'm gonna be doing is if I will just put my pin there, put it, ding, and then I can actually put the next gap, another pin there, and then a, another pin there. So because I have these three stitches here, I'll be going into these three stitches here. But the thing you need to note is that even though I'm going into a singular gap every time, I will actually need a extra gap as where it would be my starting place because what I'm actually doing is I'm going over these entire pixel stitches. So it would actually be four. Now that I've mapped out where I'm going to be sewing into on the piece, I can start the actual sewing. So noting that the edge of my piece is on this side, I want the air facing that way, so I'm going to start sewing into where that green pin is. So what I'll do is I'll take the pin out, put it to the side, and I can go in, and then I'm going to come out where the next pin is, and I can take that pin out as I go. Now because it is an edge piece, what I want to do is I actually just want to go up and underneath that first stitch, pull it over, and then I'm going to go back into where I had just come out of and go across one again. So back into where I just came out of, across to where the next pin is, take the pin out, and pull through. Now I'll go through the next stitch on the air pull up, so I'm always going from underneath, up and around, pull up, go back down through the air, across one stitch, so I'm going back down through that stitch I just came out of, I'll go across one, and out where that pin is coming out of. Ta-da! And now once again I have one more stitch left, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and underneath, up through the air stitch but because I'm not going across anymore I'm just gonna secure this piece into the head what I like to do for a lot of my pieces is I actually go down and across back to that starting stitch this is particular for my patterns only 
um, because I do a lot of the side stitching. And I'm just gonna go around that first post of that piece, going up and underneath and back into the head where what you'll do is you'll just go through the head a few times just to keep that nice and tightly secure in the doll. I know some people tie a little knot before they start sewing in and out of the body like so. I think it's just up to personal preference. I've never had an issue with it. So, and the reason why we're going in and out of the head like so is just because it gives a lot of friction on that, that tail end and it means it won't pull out as easily. And then I can just tuck in that little tail in there, using a needle, wiggle that on the inside and get rid of any random loose fluff. Amazing. So the next piece we're gonna do is actually this open-ended piece. And now with this one, because there is actually six stitches around, so there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to find six stitches on the actual base of the body that I can sew into to make it look quite even. So if I hold my shape up like so, and I wanna find out where I wanna put that horn from before, which I'm pretty sure was placed around here. Also, if you ever do a shape wrong, you can always just undo it and do it again. It's, it's not the end of the world. Anyway, <laughs> so I normally put my horns just a few rows up from the eyes and somewhere kind of in between the ears and the eye. Um, I'm gonna put it about there. And I know that's the way the bottom of my shape is, so I'm gonna put that one stitch there. And if I'm looking at this, I need to find six stitches that I'll be going over. So it'll probably be seven pins that I put in. So I'm gonna go there to there. Looks like I jump across up here. And over here. And if I even just take this piece off, I can kind of see where I join up. So I'd go over here. And then one more. And then lucky last. There you go. So we have our seven pins and I'll be sewing into that shape there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing. And because this is a fastened off end, I normally put them like so. I normally start these on the back side. So when you're actually looking at the doll, it's a lot less hidden because I mean, this does have like a little bit of an extra bump to it. So I always start on the back whenever I'm doing something like this. So I'm gonna start where this pink stitch is. Gonna go in and then I'll go out where the next pin is. Now that's actually in the body, what I'm gonna do, whenever you're sewing an open gap piece like this, is you're gonna start from the inside and go underneath the stitch to the outside. Every single time is from the inside to the out. So pull that tight, go back into the head, over to the next stitch, take that pin out, pull through, and then I'm gonna pull up and go back through the next stitch to the, from the inside of the piece to the outside, always inside out. So I learned this technique from Chrisette Designs. I will link her video below. I believe it's called the seamless join. And if you wanna go check out her video, she goes into a bit more detail about this. But this is how I learned. I learned from her and I have been doing this technique ever since. So always inside out going into the same gap where you just came out of, going across one to your next designated stitch, and then back out, up, and back through the piece. Then go down, and I can weave through, just to keep it secure in the head. I normally always do about three times around. I want to make sure I'm going through in and out in different directions. Cool. And snip it off. Lovely. And voila! Stunning. Now this next shape we're going to talk about is the flat piece. It is a little bit different to how you do other pieces. So with the ear piece we're going like on the inside up and down. This one we're always going from inside out. Now this one, you don't really want to be touching the edge as you're sewing through. So I've got this 
random loose tail from where I started. So I'm just gonna cut that short and I'm just gonna tuck it on the inside of this piece. Um, just because it won't be seen later. I'm just gonna keep it sewn on the inside. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, because I last fastened off, I'm still on the edge. I'm actually just going to quickly kind of weave my yarn through and put it back on the inside. I only just need to be on the inner of the stitch by one, so that's fine. Cool. And do it very lightly so you're not like fully tightening the stitch because that could also make the shape look a bit funny. So now I just want to find out where I'm placing this, which is about there. I want to make sure this edge is lining up the middle of the eyes. Cool. And now what we're going to do, instead of coming up through every edge stitch and going out on the outside, which sometimes works for flat pieces, it just depends what you're doing. The majority of the time you actually want to be working around the posts. So if I'm going through like this, in between each stitch you will find a post. So I've tucked it in so the yarn is actually coming out the other side of my piece, so it's on the inside. Um, when I say inside, it's going to be, if you lay it flat onto your piece, this is the outside and this is the inside. So I've got my yarn coming out the inside and I can see it's on, I'd say the one, two, three, four, about the fourth stitch. So once I lay it on here, I could use pins, but I'm just gonna risk it today. I'm so used to not using pins, so it's kind of handy for me not to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going across this piece up here. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put my pin in, and go across one, and I'm just gonna pull it through, and I'm gonna come out on the next stitch along. But what I'm going to do is we're not going to be working around the stitch. Like I'm not going to go back over and go back through. I'm actually going to go back through across the next post and back out again. The reason why is because I want to keep this nice tidy edging around the sides and I don't want to, uh, what's the word, mold that with my stitching. But when you go back through on each post, you're not actually going to go into the stitch you just came out of. You're going to go into the next stitch along and go across one again into the next designated stitch spot. And then come back out on the next post along. And then back through. So this part here, you're just wanting to be kind of very gentle with where you're going in and out of because you're not trying to mold the shape in any kind of way. You're just trying to keep it very loosely tied on. So you can see there, this is where I've just gone across the top and into the next gap. And then I have come out. And so I've gone into another spot and I've come out the next spot along. So I'm gonna go at, back up through the stitch. And then go across and go back down the next stitch. So over the post, put it tight and then back into the gap that's one along from the last gap it came out of. So I go through and then come back out again. And then once you're done there, you can just go into that last stitch and start weaving around like you did with all your other pieces. So as you can see, I've got that nice tidy stitch around there. So I'm very happy with that, um, rather than going over the edge every time and it can kind of mold the shape in a way I don't want it to be molded. So there we have it. We have mastered doing an edge piece, we've mastered doing an open gap piece, and then we have mastered doing a flat piece. I'm gonna sew on the rest of the pieces onto my little cow pal and I'll meet you back at the end. There we have it, we've learned some tips and tricks about sewing Ami Gurumi together, we've learned how to sew on these edge pieces, these open gap pieces, as well as these flat pieces here. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, your engagement means the world to me, it means I can upgrade my camera quality, it means I can upgrade my setup here rather than this dinky little thing I always bump all the time, and I just appreciate you for joining me on this journey, so thank you so much for coming to hang out with me and learning with me as we go 
probe through all these different Ami Gurumi tips and tricks. If you're looking for more tips and tricks videos on plush yarn, I do have one link below that I made a couple of weeks ago. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover in future, please leave a comment below what you'd like to see me talk about. And I just want to say thank you for joining in. So I will see you next week for another exciting video on the adventures of Crochet Mizetti. <laughs> I really need an outro song, don't I? Yeah.